were those guys on the ice wearing Leaf uniforms? Because it sure as heck didn't look like the team we've been used to seeing lately. But we'll take it nonetheless as they win 5-2 against the 18-6-6 coming into today's contest. St. Louis Blues, one of the best teams in hockey. The Stanley Cup champion St. Louis Blues. And the Leafs beat them down 5-2 in their own barn. The Leafs have played like garbage. Three, uh, their last four games, really. Losing three of four and winning one, I think it was in overtime. You know, not pretty. But you go into a game like this on the road, you're starting a road trip, you want to start this thing off good. However, you're really not playing well. And they come out and play as close to 60 minutes of hockey as you can against this team. Against one of the great teams in this league. I give this team 100% credit for this. Now you can arguably say Bennington was a little soft. He was not usually, you know, he didn't play like his usual self. But you know what the Leafs did? They didn't stop. They kept pummeling, kept getting shots, kept getting chances, and they kept getting goals. Now, let's get to this game. And it always helps. It always helps when you get out to a lead early in the game. 250 into the contest. You know, Mitch Marner enters the zone. He gets a nice little pass to the sideboards to Zach Hyman, who one-timers it. Zach Hyman and finds a way to beat Jordan Bennington. And the Leafs are in front, 1-0, 250 in to the first period. A great way to start the road trip. However, as we are used to seeing with this hockey club, when they score a goal, they have a tough time keeping the puck out of the net in the next, like, five minutes. And less than two minutes after that, Zach Hyman goal, they get one nothing. Barbashev scores to make it a 1-1 contest. And in that frame of, you know, Zach Hyman's goal till, um, I'll say like a minute after the Barbashev goal, the Leafs are scrambling. They seem lost. They seem erratic. They seem totally out of it. And it's scary because you had the lead, you quickly lost it, and this could be a disaster. Frederick Anderson makes some huge, and I mean massive, massive saves uh, in this in, in the early goings of that first period to keep this team calm, to keep them composed, and to keep this game tied at one. Because just over two minutes after that Barbashev goal, you know, William Nylander enters the zone, drops it off for Austin Matthews, and this guy loves, and I, Austin Matthews loves to take wrist shots kind of through the legs. And I love that he loves that because it's so hard for goaltenders to pick that up. And he does it right here. And he beats Bennington under the glove to make it a 2-1 Leafs lead. It is so nice. So nice to see Austin Matthews get off the little schneid that he's been. I think it was five games. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, five games. Uh, it could be five or six. Yeah, it couldn't be counted wrong. I'm counting quickly. But five or six games in a row for Austin Matthews without a goal. Uh, he was struggling quite a bit, but he was able to find the back of the net early in this one. His 17th goal of the year. Nylander grabs the lone assist, and Mitch Marner had the lone assist on the Zach Hyman first goal of the night. And the Leafs weren't done there. This is what I was talking about. Persistence and not stopping pressure. Now, the score, Austin Matthews scores the goal, and we're like, yeah, that's great. And the Leafs take a penalty, and we're like, you got to be kidding me. They're going to give this thing right back. Pressure, as we've talked about, it's not about fighting. It's not about big hits. It's on puck pressure. That's what makes a team so good. Especially in this day and age. Leafs are killing a penalty. Zach Hyman, Pierre Engvall are about the middle red line. And they stop. I don't know who it was that turned the puck over for the St. Louis Blues. But Zach Hyman and Pierre Engvall kind of close them off right at the red line, pickpocket them, and they're coming down on a 2 on 0 Engvall to Hyman to the back of the net. Zach Hyman's second goal of the night, fifth goal of the year, shorthanded, and the Leafs are now in front. It's 3-1. Hard work, persistence, and effort on the puck making a huge difference here. Now, just over three minutes after that, the Leafs get another power play. Not, not, not another power play. They get a power play. And as we talk about again, 
getting the puck on the net, good things will happen. Jason Spezza gets the puck from Morgan Riley, kind of a point-to-point pass. And you usually see Spezza going for a slap pass, or you see him going for a regular pass at the point. Instead, Spezza's like, forget that. I'm just going to slap it on the net. And he does, and it has eyes, and it beats Jordan Bennington. The Leafs are up 4-1. They got a power play goal, two 5-on-5 goals, and a shorthanded goal in the first 13 minutes of this hockey game. (coughs) Excuse me, guys. Riley and Kapanen have assists on that play. And like I said, not even 13 minutes into this game, you are up 4-1. Now, we have seen this before, though. And we've seen these leads evaporate. How are the Leafs going to come back at this? How are they going to end the first period? Okay, they do it very well. They still have a 4-1 lead. That's great. How are they going to start the second period? Okay, they do great again. That's, that's what you love to see. Then about midway through the second period, Leafs get a power play. And we're like, all right, that's, that's what we're talking. Let's bury them. Let's get a 5-1 lead now. And it was a weird play. You got this is this see this is the way sports works and hockey works sometimes. You know, Mitch Marner kind of tries to shoot the puck. I don't know what happened there, but it was kind of bouncing all over the place. The puck goes up and it lands right on the tape of Austin Matthews, right at the side of the net. And somehow he, he like one times it right as it hits the ice, and it goes into the top corner of the net, beating Jake Allen. Yeah. Your damn tootin'. Jake Allen had to come in for Bennington because after he gave up that fourth goal, his night was done. Four goals on, where is it, 11 shots for Jordan Bennington, and his night was done. The first time he has been pulled mid-game, and the St. Louis Blues are in shock because they have not had this happen to them um, you know, since last year when they were not good. Before their crazy run, then playoff and Stanley Cup, and even their start to this season. The Leafs put a beat down on them early. Now, even though you're up five one, you cannot sit back at all. How do they end the second period? Well, they scramble around a bit, but they end up. You know, Frederick Anderson, big part of it, obviously, holds them to nothing. Does not allow a second period goal, and the Leafs go into the third period up five one. I mean, it's exactly where you want to be, and, <clears throat> and 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 you got to find a way to close this game out strong. Now, in the third period. St. Louis obviously being desperate, down four goals. They need to start getting pucks on the net. In the first couple minutes of this game, they are on fire, the Blues. They're firing everything at Freddie. He's got to make big save after big save after big save. And then David Perron scores to make it 5-2. And Sheldon Keefe makes a bold but very good move. I, I really, really like what he did here. He realizes how young this team is. And he sees how sporadic and crazy this third period has begun. And so he calls a timeout. Usually you see coach call timeouts in the final minute to give them a rest, but you know, all that kind of stuff. But instead you saw Sheldon Keefe in a 5-2, ball, uh, 5-2 hockey game call a timeout. You know, just over two minutes into the third period. And you know what it did? It settled the guys down. Because the rest of that period, they were playing dump and chase. They were cycling the puck extremely well. They didn't have the, the Blues didn't have a lot of sustained pressure. The Leafs on puck pressure was amazing. I thought they did a really good job. Every time a Blue player had the puck, it seemed like a Leaf player was glued to them. It looked really strong. I was extremely impressed with the way this team played today. And that's how the game finished. The Leafs actually won in shots 10-9 in the third period. They did an incredible job finishing this game out. The Leafs lost shots, yeah, 28-27. You lost by one. whoop de do. Freddie Anderson, he's a beauty. He's an amazing goalie. One of the best goalies in, the, in hockey. Come at me. Say otherwise. He's one of the better goaltenders in the game that you can rely, rely on every single night and almost every single night give you an amazing performance. I mean, look at the shots on goal. were 12-8 in the first period for the Leafs, 11-5. St. Louis in the second, Freddie being big, and then Matthew scoring the power play goal. I mean, it's, it's it doesn't matter how many shots you have on net. It's what goes in the back of the net that counts, right? They won in shots by one. We won in goals by three. Big difference. Doesn't really matter too much. Uh, face-offs, the Leafs are usually the dominant team in hockey. Um, well, they weren't the greatest today. They only won 42% of the draws. 57.4% were the St. Louis Blues. They have a, real, a lot of good face-off takers on that team. And this is a key. The Leafs special teams this year has just been subpar at best. 
They really haven't been good. The penalty kill has been atrocious. The power play has been insanely inconsistent. The Leafs went two for two on the power play today. And they killed off all four St. Louis power plays. Perfect special teams night for the Leafs. Legit, perfect two for two, and then they were 0 for 4. Incredible night for the Leafs. Anybody could say anything. The Leafs, yeah, they lost in shots by one. They scored five goals. They allowed only two. Frederick Anderson played very well. Special teams, power play was great. Penalty kill was great. The Leafs did a really good job today playing one of their best games of the season when they needed to. They needed this win badly. But I can tell from everybody, did you expect the Leafs to win tonight? Like, to be totally honest, no. The way this team has been playing, you're on the road against a really good team. You, I didn't expect them to win today. They proved me wrong, and I'm so glad they did. They are my team. They will always be my team. I'll always support their te my team, even though I'll probably turn gray. They're my team. They always will be. And I am proud of these guys for tonight's game. Now, quickly through the stats here, Frederick Anderson had two goals on 28 shots. Uh, that is a 929 save percentage for him. A great job for Freddie Zach Hyman with a couple goals today and a plus two for him. So he has, uh, what is that, six points in 12 games for Zach Austin Matthews with a couple goals. Goals number 17 and 18 on the year. So a great job by Matthews. Jason Spezza with the goal today. And he's been incredible as Jason Spezza. That is goal number four for him on the year. Point 12 in 20 games for Jason Spezza. He's been incredible for this team. And, um, you know, he's growing on me a lot. I like what I'm seeing. Mitch Marner, great to see him get back into the points column. Uh, you know, struggle, obviously struggled in that first game, but um, again, you know, obviously your first game back from a, a, a like an ankle injury or a foot injury or knee injury, any kind of leg injury, uh, your first game is usually a little rusty. But he looked a lot better tonight. Had two assists and was a plus one. Great job by him. Riley Engvall, Nylander, and Kapanen all grab assists as well, and the Leafs pick up a W. It's all uh, in the end. Points don't matter. Everything else doesn't matter. The Leafs got two points. That is what matters, people. Don't look at standings. You know why I'm saying that? Because at this point, when you're like 31 games into the year, why are you looking at standings? There's still like 50 odd, or maybe, well, I guess, yeah, about, about 50 games to go. 51, I think it is, games left. There's lots of hockey to play. You got to take it one game at a time. Enjoy this victory because it was a damn good one. And the next contest for the Leafs is going to be on Tuesday. So they don't play Sunday. They don't play Monday. They play Tuesday in Vancouver. 10 o'clock puck drop. Woo, baby. It is going to be a late one there in Vancouver. Frederick Anderson, Jacob Markstrom are the expected goaltenders in that game. And Vancouver's been playing a really good game. Really good hockey lately. They've won a couple games in a row. They're 15-11-4. They put a really good season together so far Have the Vancouver Canucks. Um, and for the Leafs, look, you got a really tough schedule coming up, obviously, with Vancouver in Vancouver. You have Calgary in Calgary on the Thursday. And then on Saturday, you got Edmonton in, in Edmonton. Those All three teams are over 500. All three teams are, gonna be, are battling for playoff spots. They're all good teams. This is a tough trip. You started it extremely well in St. Louis. Now you have your West Coast Canada trip. How are they going to do? All right. The first test, like I said, is on Tuesday night at 10 p.m. as we're in Vancouver taking on the Canucks. All right. So you know what, guys? That is going to do it for this one. If you guys enjoyed, the, if you guys enjoyed this video and enjoy the hockey game there this evening because it was fun to watch, smack the like button to appreciate that. Hit the subscribe button if you guys have not already. Comment down below your thoughts on the game, your thoughts on the video. Who is your MVP in this game? You know what? I'm giving it to the entire squad. I usually try and give it to one guy, but I thought Zach Hyman had a great night. I thought Freddie was great. I thought Matthews was great. I loved the looks of Pontus Aberg in his first uh, game as a leave. I thought he was really electric out there especially playing with Matthews and Nylander, they scored two goals. That line scored two goals. So I'm not complaining. Well, I guess Matthews was a power play goal, but that line even scored one goal. So it was great to see there uh, by Pontus Aberg. I want to hear your guys' thoughts on this team and what they did today and your expectations for the West Coast Canada road trip. All right. And, um, you know, guys, Twitter is down below for myself. Follow up, send me DM, do all that great stuff. Also, Patreon account is down below, guys. Like I mentioned before, if you guys are interested in signing up to the Patreon for TO Sports Talk, the link is in the description below. Like I said, only $1 a month. I'm not here to scam you guys. I mean, I I, I, I don't want to think of it as that. I, I, I like to think of it as you guys are helping the channel grow, hoping it become what you guys want it to become. And that's all I, that's all, that's all I look for it as. All right, so you know what, guys? Like I said, the links are in the description for Twitter and Patreon. 
And I will talk to you guys. Raptors edition will be tomorrow night as the Raptors head to Philly. They're probably already there. Take on the 76ers. The Sixers are perfect at home. 6 p.m. tip-off there in Philly. The back-to-backs are not an excuse for the 76ers. You know why? Because I'm assuming most of the starters did not play the fourth quarter against Cleveland today. Yeah, they pretty much didn't. You know why? Because they won 141-94 to against the Cleveland Cavaliers. So uh, that's going to be a very interesting contest there tomorrow for the Raptors. Expectations? I don't know, guys. We're just going to have to wait and see what this team can bring tomorrow. We've seen a couple shaky play, a couple shaky games for the Raptors in the last two. they got to play a team who's absolutely red hot at home and feeling real comfortable, uh, especially tonight against the Cavs. All right? We're gonna to, I'm really intrigued to see what this team can do tomorrow in Philly. Again, one, once, in, once again, a statement game for the Toronto Raptors. As for the Leafs, as we've talked about, their next game is on Tuesday night, 10 p.m. puck drop in Vancouver. Jacob Markstrom, Frederick Anderson, are the expected goaltenders in that game on Tuesday. Thank you so much for listening and watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Talk to you guys then.